Hello and welcome back to my gaming channel thing. Today, <clears throat> I'm going to more or less just be talking about Wild Arms as opposed to playing through it. And mainly because this is one of the... If you haven't seen any videos of mine posted in recent weeks or so, it's because I've been... It's ever since the play... I, I got caught up in a few things, but ever since PlayStation had this flash sale... I've decided to play Wild Arms. I have never played it before. Um, I don't know what prevented me from ever playing it. I guess I, I just wasn't a huge RPG fan. Oh, I know exactly what it was. When I was in my early teens, I resented anything that had to do with reading. And if I had to read, I did, was generally just was not uninterested. So when I learned that most of these games, you have to sit and read all the dialogue, I was just like, nope, not for me. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be fighting monsters in this game. But I want to just really give my thoughts about this game. I mean, for especially for a game of PS1 nature, this game isn't bad, especially for the era. I mean, the graphics, graphically, let's face it, this game graphically, as far as these scenes look, I FF7 at the time. I like Final Fantasy VII, don't get me wrong. I love that game, but the graphics of... I would just play Monster Hunter. The graphics of FF7, like an overall, was kind of shitty. This reminds me of basically... They focus... Obviously, you can tell FF focused more on the CG scene. This was more anime, so I don't... I mean, there was only one anime scene. You know, it was the opening scene. Yeah, I'm... Um, <laughs> but mainly, whoa, she was pissed Oh, she killed that thing with staff. Yeah. But, uh, my, <clears throat> my main thing I was actually shocked about this was I didn't know Sony made this. Like, going back in the day, I really didn't care what publishers made it. Like, when a friend literally followed me home one day, from school, I can never forget this. He came to school with a copy of Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, imagine that, bringing Final Fantasy VII to school. But he came with a copy of that game, and we basically, he followed me home from school that day, and he was like, we're playing this. And he literally did. He followed me home and slapped it in my PlayStation. Now, that apprehensive, I really didn't, I could care less for our time. Kind of the reading thing, and just, it just seemed boring to me. But then again, you know, my type of games at that stage where I was more or less, I was your Gran Turismo, I was your, mostly Gran Turismo, maybe a couple wrestling games and a few things like that. So, I mean, I wasn't really too, I don't know, RPG-centric at that time. I could really have cared less. But nevertheless, he turned me on to it. Once I realized it, I thought all the great RPGs came, on, came more or less from you know, Squaresoft. Because that's the only ones that he had. He literally had every Squaresoft one. He had uh, Final Fantasy at the time, 7 and 8. Um, he also had Chrono Cross. Uh, he had, like, Ear Guys. I know, Ear Guys is a fighting game. Technically. But uh, he had Ear Guys, and he basically just had anything that was, like, RPG-related. I'd never really seen it before. I was just, like... I was kind of... I was very apprehensive, but then again, I was blown away after a while. So I couldn't really complain. Um, but get long story short, when the PSN had this little flash sale where I got this game for 90 cents, I never played it. I was shocked to find out that it was made by Sony Entertainment, by Sony Entertainment, or this was published by Sony Entertainment of America. But I realized how good this game is as far as the dynamic the look, the graphics are great. For 1997, this was pretty stellar. You know, as far as the, t the only thing, the only minor complaint I can actually say so far about this game is the translation is a little, eh, can be iffy. Um, that's the only thing I've noticed. The translation in this game is a little messed up. There are times where it just doesn't make sense or there's just some words that, like, they could use, you know, instead of your, they just go, you power, you, uh, uh, you power all. It's like, it just, things like that don't make sense, or they're missing like S's, you know, for just some things like that, and there's just some things that just don't make sense in general. Um, 
So I mean, the translation, I guess, could have been a little bit better. Now, I started out with Wild Arms 1. I do, I, I bought both of them that were on there, Wild Arms 1 and 2. You know, if there were 90 cents, we wouldn't. But I mean, I started out with just these two, and I decided to play the first one because if I'm gonna, you know, <clears throat> More or less, by the time I learned about Wild Arms, everybody was going eight shit over Wild Arms 2. I mean, they were just like, holy crap, this game's awesome, this game's awesome. And so I wanted, so basically, I just want to work myself up to it. I want to play through this one, beat this one, then play through Wild Arms 2, and to see why everybody went eight shit over it. Uh, I, know that, I know the look and feel of it changed a little bit. So I'm just wondering, you know, because that's, because... Let's think about it. Nobody really ever talks about Wild Arms. You just Google search Wild Arms, you're gonna see more pictures that come up for Wild Arms 2, 3, and so on than you are the first one. So it makes me say the first one isn't the greatest, but you had to start somewhere. I bet or Wild Arms the only other thing I can think of is Wild Arms 1 was like an underground cult hit in America. And when they brought over Wild Arms 2, people went nuts over. Like, Final Fantasy VII, a lot of, as far as I gather, you know, people can care less than Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy VII came out, and then Final Fantasy VIII, people just bought it up instantaneously, like on launch day. You know, so I mean, maybe it was that type of deal, where this game was really good, and I realized the second one had to be better. I don't know what it was, but I'll, I just know that I heard more about Wild Arms 2 than from Wild Arms 1. And I, playing through this game is not bad. <clears throat> I tell you right now, like, the, you know, I have a friend, there's a friend of mine that always thinks that you have just started playing this game, like, no matter what stage it was, like, uh, like, when we, like, give me an example, when you get out of Midgar in Final Fantasy VII, when you first escape, he's like, you have just started playing this game. Now, when you realize, <clears throat> at the time, I was blown away, because I was already, I think Midgar, by the time we did it, it was like four or five hours deep. For me, that was most games to beat them. Like, your Metal Gear Solid, believe it or not, can be beaten in, like, four or five hours. So for me, so for me, it was like, when I escaped Midgard, he's like, you have just started playing this game. And I realized there was two different discs left. I was like, wow, this game is freaking massive. But, um, but it was like, this had a false finish where I was, like, freaked out. Because this game literally tells you, this game has just started. I was six, I think I was like six hours deep when I made the save. And if you haven't played this game, I'm not gonna ruin it. But basically, something happens, and basically, you're watching like a little cutscene. It's not a, what I call, it's not a CG cutscene, it's just a graphical cutscene like this. And like they scroll over, and like credits are rolling onto the screen. And my first thought was, okay, first of all, my character was only like level eight. I'm like, no, I'm like I have to have more. It has to be, there has to be more than game this, because it really felt like the game was ending. But I love the fact, but after I realized they did it, they did something so unique where they, where it's like after you got to know the first three characters, they actually went and ended that portion of the game, saying that no longer, that portion is over. Their innocence, is basically saying their innocence is now over, and now their journey is beginning. By ending that, it was... I liked it, but I was confused because I wasn't sure if the game was actually ending. I didn't think it was because I was I was about to be pissed going, that's a five-hour RPG, you know. And I was just, I don't know, it was one of those things where I was just very, it wasn't until that, you know, because everything literally faded to black after all the credits rolled, everything faded to black. And I'm like, this can't be it. I'm like, what is going on? I could swear they should start of the journey, but this feels like the end of the game. And thank God they picked it up. Um, I don't know, as far as the story of the game goes, eh, it's different. I like how they introduce each character. You know, it, you just don't, you know, it actually, they get, <clears throat> let's put it this way, they add backstory to, kind of backstory to every character. More or less, you just kind of, from what I've noticed, is you just, how they start the game, you meet the characters that already have their own life, but you don't really know much about them. They're just kind of going along their own business. And you eventually just meet up with all of them somewhere. Damn it, that guy's poison. Holy crap, he was pissed off. So, so I mean, that's the only other thing I can really think of. You know, is that they introduce each character, you got to know a little bit about their background. 
but not a lot. But I mean, the main gameplay, the main story, I haven't really even dove into it too much. Oh shit, they're dying. These? Yeah. So I mean, the main story of it that I found isn't bad so far. I mean, don't get me wrong, people are probably saying, why have you never played this game? This game came out like 18 years ago. Like I said, shut up already. Yeah. <clears throat> when you're a kid, you base, I, I, I was doing odds and ends jobs, just trying to get PlayStation money that I like to call before I actually got a job. And so I mean, my, very, my cash fund was very limited. So at the time, I was very picky about the games I, you know, I stuck with what I knew. I wasn't gonna pick up a random game that I didn't know anything about. And remember, if there's any kids watching this, the internet really wasn't, the internet was around, but it wasn't as big as it was today where I can just go, oh, let me go on here and look up this game. No. You know, this game probably, there was probably a gaming website that showed this. But I'll give you an example of most of the screenshots were, that were on these websites were people that were actually literally playing on their television and taking a shot of their TV to show screenshots. That's the majority of them. Just, everything wasn't digitized. Like, there is... <laughs> And if you saw a video online, God can help you, you know, with dial-up. The quality A was shitty. And number two, it was probably the actual publisher putting out a video on their website. You know, so it wasn't, so I mean, you really didn't do it. So you more had to do reading to find out if these games were good or not. And a lot of times, you, had, you, you kind of had to trust. Everybody can, you know, everybody that grew up in the 90s, or should I say, you know, video game-wise, they always, they, you can always rely on that local video game, like a rental place, or like a blockbuster, something back then. And what most people would do is they would literally, they would ask the guy that either worked there, they would go, how good is this game? Because chances are, if you work at one of those stores, you either played it, bought it, brought it home, you know, you messed around with it in the store, or what have not. So I mean, that was the only way to really get a lot of your information, is to say, okay, walk up to that weird video game guy that looks like he lives in his parents' basement, and go, hey, how was this game? And nine times out of ten, not only has he played it, he's probably beat it, and he'll give you an honest answer whether he liked it or not. And those type of guys, believe it or not, are, not, are trustworthy. We're trustworthy mainly because they didn't bolt it around. And they would tell you, if you're into like RPGs, the game's phenomenal. If you could care less for like random battles and all that, you're gonna hate it. You know, that type of thing. But I mean, he would always. Uh, I thought she was immune to poison. That sucks. Die. So, I mean, yeah. As far as that were to go, so, I mean, I didn't take a chance too many times on game franchises that I really didn't know. <clears throat> I guess I probably should have. I mean, from what I've seen, this game is not crazy expensive to get, to get on eBay. Um, but, I mean, for 80 cents, I couldn't, you know. I'll stick with this for a while. <clears throat> but as far as that were to go, you know. But I mean, as far as that were to go, most of. <clears throat> oh, yeah, the whole game thing. Yeah, I mean, as far as. I do want to buy an actual copy of this. <clears throat> It's fairly, from what I've seen, it's fairly inexpensive on eBay. I mean, I'm talking, you're talking $15, $20 per week, which is about your average price for, like, an RPG, you know. This is everything, like, all instruction manual, box, all that shit, you know. So, I mean, that's actually not too bad. It's just more, I guess it just goes supply and demand. Why does it keep poisoning? I guess, it, like I said, I guess it just goes supply and demand type deal. Right now, there's a lot more. There isn't too much demand for it. I mean, and the PlayStation Network putting out this game for 80 cents really drives that demand down as far as physical copies were to go. I mean, you know, Final Fantasy VII, I think the reason why it is so much, let's face it, Final Fantasy VII, if you were to buy that game today, it should theoretically be like a $10 game. And you can find it for $10, but it's very few and far between. But the average price that people get it for is like 30 bucks. There is really no re let's put it this way. And there are people selling it that are used copies for like seventy and eighty dollars. There's no reason for that game to be that much. But it's more or less they think, oh 
The people that are trying to sell it are like, oh, this game is... They try and post it and say the non-greatest hits version is rare. It's not rare. They, were, they made so many copies before they made that greatest hit. That's what they don't get. Is they, you know, that's what a lot of people don't get. Is you can find a non-greatest hits copy for about 20 dollars. Easily. Everything. All discs, manuals included. Stop poisoning him. So, I mean, you can easily find, you know, the game is pretty cheap. The people that are selling it for $70, $80 are not. You know, and I've gone on different forums, and I've seen people say, Oh, I paid, like, $80 for my copy of Final Fantasy VII. And, like, nearly everybody in the forum goes, You're an idiot. Why'd you pay that much? Oh, because it was this, that, the other thing. Or it was factory sealed. Now, here's the thing about factory sealed. I work, I knew a guy, or knew someone that used to work in a video game store, that had his own shrink machine. Now, let me say it this way. It wasn't shrink machine as far as... He can't do the manufacturing, he couldn't do the manufacturing free but he would shrink wrap all, like, all his games. And if you remember, PlayStation games had that little, like, quality seal thing on it where you had to kind of wrap around it. There's an easy way around it. You could theoretically peel that thing off, or just lift up a corner and see it not scratch. Or, what a lot of people used to do is, if you push down on, if you, very gently, very carefully, if you push down on the top, kind of the case, while you were lifting it up, you could theoretically pop the CD out from its holder and slide it out the bottom. And that's what this guy used to do. He used to do things like that, where he would gently lift up the <clears throat> seal across the top, and he would open up the game, and then he would play it for like two or three weeks, and then he would, you know, basically shrink wrap it, throw it back into it, you know, put it back in his case. Oh, this is brand new, factory sealed, and he would sell it at his game store for brand new price. So I mean, a lot of people on eBay, there are stupid people on eBay that think that's factory sealed. And I've seen pictures, like if you ever wonder why people say this is factory sealed, and you see the edges and you see like a crease folds, unless they've gotten, people probably have gotten to the point where they can't emulate that, but unless, but the reason why you see pictures, people take pictures like that and go, why do I care what this looks like, it's brand new, is because a lot of people, because uh, people like that to say, why do I care, it's got the seal thing there. Those who are retarded people that will play retarded prices for a game that's probably been used and might have a few scratches on it as opposed to a game that hasn't been. So it's more or less it's just showing <clears throat> that this game indeed is factory sealed. Like, I have, I still have factory sealed games. Why? This is a case in point I haven't got around to it. I'll give you an idea of a game that I have factory sealed. I got it for $2.99 where I work. Duke Nukem. The new Duke Nukem. Yeah. Why is that game still factory sealed? Well, it's not the fact that a lot of people say it's garbage. I picked it up. I obviously wanted to play it. I picked it up for three dollars. But it's more or less because I've heard... It's not more or less because I heard so many bad things about it. It was more... At this point, I just don't know if I... You know, I feel like I don't have the time to play it, but then again, here I am playing this game for hours on it. You know, so I don't know... So honestly, I don't know if that's the case. But, oh, he's taking some damage. So, I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily the case or what, but, I don't know. So, I mean, but <clears throat> as, far, as far as Wild Arms were to go, this game seems alright. You know, it's your typical RPG, I mean, it's your typical RPG. Like, there were a few things it could have used... The only other complaint I can say about this is, I hate tutorials, but they could have used at least a few as to tell you what the hell you're supposed to do. Like, I'll be honest with you, when, like, when you started up with that mage character, which is the girl, they don't tell you, like, specifically, I, had to, I just kind of wandered around and wandered in this magic store, and they don't really tell you how to bond, combine magic and things like that, you know, or, <clears throat> or how to use his arms or whatnot. You know, I, I guess this is what comes down to the manual, you know, that, you know, that's the good thing I can say about the PlayStation versions of it, is that they have the actual manual. So, there's that, you can actually view the manual, <clears throat> you know, so I guess that explained it, you know, that, then again, that's going back in the day where you need the manual for it. I guess I've gotten spoiled where they'll have like a little tutorial if you want to learn how to use this. I'll be honest with you, when they say, do you want to learn how to use this, it's like, no, I'll figure it out. 
And then I'm realizing as I'm playing this, going, going, where's that tutorial? Because I kind of would like to know how to use this. And I didn't know I could upgrade it until I just randomly talked to people and somebody was like, would you like to upgrade your arm for this amount of money? And I sure I would. You know, so it's, <clears throat> it's one of those things where I'm just, ooh, ooh. Yeah, fair hard possibility if I damage it, snap. So I mean, as far as that were to go, yeah, I guess I could use a little bit of tutorial because I, I didn't figure it out until, you know, like that mystic thing. I didn't know that you could actually, like, that enhance an item. Like, you know, thank God there's an explanation on here because I didn't think there was. But unlike, like, the Final Fantasy where you can hit a button and it's always there, static for every item. Like, give me an example. Like, you hit, I, I said, okay, explanation, and it goes away. I didn't, you have to actually hold the button and then skip through to say, okay, what does this do? What does that do? And what does this do? And what does that do? You know, and things like that. So I have to go, so you have to kind of hold down the button, which isn't a bad thing, because it kind of takes that thing away. Um, but it's just like, I didn't know I had to hold it down. So half the time, as I'm, yeah, that's a weird thing. To leave this menu, you have to hit, like, circle, and then it gives you a ring. Like, use trade? Again, I don't know how you can trade between the... I guess if your other characters are with you, I'm assuming there's the only three main characters so far that I've come across. <clears throat> so, I mean, some of that stuff I just don't... I, I gotta <clears throat> look up to see what the trade thing is. Mean. We're all together. As far as I gotta say, is this RPG isn't the hardest one I've played. Believe it or not, it's fairly easy. You know, and then again, I like the over level. Like what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna level my characters up. By the time I get to the next boss, it's just gonna be I'm just gonna dominate, destroy. <clears throat> and what's weird is when I was playing some of these characters, they don't have a boss. Like uh, the Jack character, when you like after each character is introduced, as far as Rudy and uh, Ciela were to go, there was a boss you had to fight. Well, Jack, there was no boss, it was just escape the dungeon. That was it. And I was thinking I had to fight something, there was a save point, and I went to go and I escaped, and nothing. I was like, alright, no boss. I don't have to fight, I don't have to fight anybody, I guess that's cool. So I was just like, But I mean, yeah. <clears throat> so I mean, if I haven't, so obviously since I haven't been posting very many videos in the past, you know, couple weeks, I've been stuck. <clears throat> obviously, I've had work. I've had a few things happen. I obviously couldn't just pound them out. Then again, I have to be in the mood to really do this. And when I'm in the mood to play this game, I'll be honest. With you, I really, I felt like I had to put up something because I can get caught up in this game. I generally don't like to broadcast when I haven't. Yet. More or less, especially these type of RPGs, and it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the copyrights or anything like that. It's more or less, if there's text on screen, this is what it would sound like when there'd be, I'll give you an example. This is what it would be like for me when I, if I was playing through this game for text on screen. Because I'm not good at reading. It's like, I hope you read that. You know, I don't want to... There's a lot of people that do RPGs. Sometimes they do it, but if I was going to do a proper walkthrough, I would be, you know, obviously reading this stuff out loud and making comments of it. Other than that, because more or less what happens, I'll be reading some of the stuff and I'll just laugh to myself, or I'll laugh and I won't say anything. That's not entertaining. I'm trying to make this somewhat entertaining. Um... So I mean, as far as that were to go, the main reason why I like to do this type of RPG, I want to do the fun. <clears throat> There's a game that I really want to review, and I have to, I want to review the game, Frequency and Amplitude. I kind of want to do it like an all-in-one video in a way, in a package, um, but it's more or less, <clears throat> because they're music-based, there was one band that I could potentially say yes. I have to get in contact with them. I'll be honest with you, it's Freeze Pop. <clears throat> Those are the, probably the only two ones that I could probably 
contact their website or get a hold of them and go, can I use this? More than likely, they'll probably say yes because I'm not making any money off of it. But all the but because they probably won't charge me anything. <laughs> Out of every other band, they'll probably be like, no, you cannot use this. No, you cannot use this. But I mean, if for a game like that, I literally I have to go to each band and literally have to submit a question: Can I use this? Can I get the rights to use this song from this? You know, and if they say yes, I can do. Now I can do a, you know, a review of that game, so to speak, and play through. But if they say no, I can do a review of the game, but it will be on you. It, it, you know. <clears throat> It, honestly, it'll be on mute, and probably what I can do, <laughs> this sounds so retarded and so weird, but probably what I can do <clears throat> for it, <clears throat> to give a review of the game is YouTube has, like, music that I can insert, or I can probably just play music in the background on a loop, and then just mute it when I want to really talk and whatnot. <clears throat> but I mean, it's like, that's what I feel like I almost might have to do. But that's not entertaining because that's not the music. But I mean, it'll show the game, but it won't be it won't be great. <clears throat> I don't know. But as far as the broadcast were to go, I'm probably going to end the stream right here, more or less. I really want to play through this game. I have time to do it. I really don't feel like reading. So I mean, on that note, thank you so very much for watching.